It's funny because, you know, we've had four years of succession and it covers so much ground that writing a review of the entire show is, as I said to um, the arts editor, Alison Krogan, a bit like stuffing an octopus into a sock. My name is Sarah Krasnestein. I'm a writer and I'm the television critic for the Saturday paper. And this week I wrote about succession. I start the review with the kind of image that was in my mind throughout the four seasons, which was um, Goya's painting, Saturn devouring his son. Um, in that image, which is quite disturbing, we see Kronos or Saturn, his eyes are stretched wide, his mouth is desperately open, and he is about to eat the uh, headless body of his adult child. And that desperation and the kind of brutality of, you know, that violation of the parent-child relationship was something that, you know, is always being referred to in succession. So it may look like it's about these, you know, corporate machinations. It may look like it's about, you know, constant wildness in this commercial jungle. But at the heart of every episode, what the show is consistently returning to is a lack of love in the family system and its consequences, both, you know, personally in the kids' lives and relationally um, in, in that kind of micro community. So the show looks like it's a rollicking ride through all of these twists and turns. There's in like a, almost a Russian novel, epic worthy kind of cast of characters. And each one of them is fully formed and so absorbing. But again, on that deeper level, this is a, a recurring circle of the same kind of abuse, the same disappointments, the same unfulfilled hopes playing out again and again and again. So, you know, a lot of these kind of trauma responses for people like Logan Roy, who are fundamentally organized around shame, um, they have interpersonal repercussions, but they also have collective repercussions out in the world. So, you know, what's the behavior that results in having literally billions, uh, billions of dollars? We see the corporate irresponsibility. We see the phrase, you know, not real people in whatever it took to get that level of profit. We see this insatiable appetite for, for power. And, you know, it's it, we many times the, the kids point out to him, like, when is enough enough? And it will never be enough because there's a hole in his you know soul. And so it's not just, you know, the sadness of a father that can't love his children or the children that can't have that source of love. It's also kind of the very real communal collective impacts of these Mm, definitely symptomatic, possibly sociopathic drives being normalized as, you know, work ethic or, you know, hustle or, you know, corporate domination or just politics. Um, and it's quite disturbing when we start to, to make those connections. So um, maybe I'll go back to the beginning uh, when I feel I'm strong enough <laughs> and watch it again. But it is a show that keeps on giving. It does have like all those levels of meaning. So, you know, if, if you've finished, you can go back to the beginning. And if you haven't started it yet, you're in for a ride.